So there she is. This is the old incubator I made. This is the first model. Um, I'll give you guys a quick rundown of how I made it and how it works. So I used a really cheap styrofoam uh, cooler to make it and I added this kind of uh, insulating tape in order to better help retain the heat inside the incubator and I got these little plastic plastic things that are on the top just from uh, strawberry carts that we bought at the groceries and this one was from my cell phone so I was trying to make a double pane window there it's my first design so that's this is the cap and uh, here's here's the heart of it so this is this is the 100 watt light bulb here and I have the the circuitry right here and I I program the the DC 1620 which is this one right here that's the temperature sensor and I program it using a using parallax's basic stamp too and let me let me show you kind of how let me show you the work in the how it works so so we, I gotta connect the the power supply this is a seven and a half volts so that'll that'll turn on the the circuits and it turns on this fan in order to force air into the the incubator and this switch right here it lets me turn it on whether it's connected or not so that's another little cool thing I added there so it shuts power off to to the fan and to the circuitry here but once I turn it on it goes back on and that little yellow light bulb that's on tells me that the temperature that I've programmed into the DS1620 is too low and if I connect the 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 light bulb here, okay, it's gonna get a little bright. But here we go. So the light bulb is on. We can see here that the temperature is at about 84 degrees Fahrenheit, and that kind of I don't know if you guys can see it clearly or not, but it's about 84 on the on the thermometer as well on the manual thermometer or the more old school one and uh, so so here we have it this this uh, IC controls the the three pins on the right lower hand side on the lower right hand side are the ones I was talking about the T hot the T cold and the T common which combines both the hot and cold pins so they control the transistors there and then they also the last one right there controls the transistor here that then activates this relay which is the one responsible for turning on and off the 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 light bulb here so let's let me show you uh, let me show you that it actually works so we'll put the lid on top in order for the heat not to be escaping so the temperature will slowly rise in there. I'm gonna run my software here. I hope you guys can can see the numbers. I can see them on my screen, so I hope you can see them there. But if I, it's running already. But here's my here's my code that I've written in in P Basic, and I run it. So it'll run, and then it starts to sample the temperature at a rate of one sample per second and we can see that the temperature is going up because the light bulb is on so we expect the temperature to be rising and it is and as soon as it goes above 98 and a half maybe 99 the light bulb not the light bulb I'm sorry the the LED there I hope you guys can see it it's still kinda on it's the yellow one will turn off and it'll remain off until we drop below the temperature cold so here we go we're at about 98 and a half so once we go to 99 I believe it, it shuts off yeah so it's no longer on already it's off and then there we go so 
the temperature now is too hot and the red LED indicates that it's too hot. But the T common has also activated. So that's why the the main light bulb is off. And it'll remain off until we drop below the temperature cold. So it's still too hot. The red LED is indicating that there's a temperature fluctuations there. But in order to speed up the process, I'm going to just lift the lid so you guys can see uh, that it does indeed work. So there we go. It's That's funny. The temperature sensor on the right isn't corresponding with the ones here. But if you guys can see here, we're just about like 95, 96 degrees. So here we go. So now we dropped below the temperature cold. And again, the yellow LED comes back on. And so does the, so does the main light bulb. So that's my old design. And the biggest drawback with this design was that since the eggs have to be turned every so often, a few times every day, the thing I had, I had to manually rotate the eggs and I had my electronics right next to the eggs so every time I was moving the eggs the electronics got moved around and unfortunately moving the electronics around wasn't really good because I left the eggs after turning them I left them alone for a couple of hours I went to go run some errands and when I came back some something got shorted my my IC timer wasn't working properly and unfortunately the light bulb never got turned off and the eggs unfortunately got hard boiled and I felt really bad because they were like seven or eight eight days old they already had little veins coming out and I, I, I felt really bad so I promised those little eggs that I would make it up to them and their brothers and sisters would have a much better incubator and that is the thing I will show you once I get it set up here.